it's often claimed that games get better optimized for consoles as a generation uh i guess he means as the generation progresses relatively to pc are we seeing that are we seeing that this generation where a GPU compatible <laughs> at launch can no longer match console settings performance or have things remained relatively the same? Is there still room for quote unquote comp- console optimization these days now they are so similar to PC? I'm going to obviously punt that one in your direction, Alex. I mean, I mm. would say it's not too different if you look at third party titles, just like whatever. Your Unreal Engine games, they're they're scaling much like I expect them to do to do ver- yeah. vis-a-vis the consoles. It's only when you get to like Sony first party titles and really only them, and I that you see like disparities in GPU stuff. And some of it was like originally with like The Last of Us Part uh one when that came out, like the big yeah. disparity was like uh the the VRAM issue to like the the 20 series cards, or I guess even the 5700 XT and the 5700 where that eight gigabyte buffer was not great enough but then with like real optimization because the game was broken at launch like we realized the ram was fine but it's more like the scaling vis-a-vis the console there it's like i don't think it's perfectly right because i think if you look at the other aspects of the th- uh, of the game like you realize like oh maybe they could get some more juice out of it but that's like that's like more dev time that's spending more time to maybe make the engine more like have just things where it ticks better on certain hardware and they don't necessarily need to do that now because everyone is not going to be rocking an rtx 2000 or rx 5700 series card anymore they're going to be on ampere they're going to be soon on ada or whatever rdna3 Mm -hmm. rdna2 cards so they don't really need to care at some point in time even though it's technically feasible and that's what you're going to probably see more over time from those type of engines uh but i don't think so for third-party engines because third-party engines tend to be pc first and to some degree of the word uh and yeah i don't think i've seen any changes there at all for since launch mm. it's pretty kind of interesting actually I, mean, I do think that as a console generation matures developers get more out of it relative to pc and if you go back to ps4 I've actually got a four gigabyte version of the R9270X, right. which is essentially the PlayStation 5 GPU without the extra compute, uh, uh, AC, AC compute pipeline, pipeline. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, and yeah, you're not going to be running, um, you know, Modern Warfare 2 or Modern Warfare 3 to the same degree of performance and fidelity as a PS4 can do on that GPU anymore. And actually, the reason I bought the four gigabyte version of that, which is very rare, is that I was really interested to see whether Death Stranding would run like a PS4. And it, the game wouldn't even boot because it it's doesn't not DX12 support the one. correct DX12 yeah. <laughs> features. <laughs> So, yes, I think there is a general, you know, progression there. But right now it does seem to be the Sony first party and specifically, um, you know, the the Last of Us part one. Yeah. <laughs> the Naughty Dog ones. It seems to be the case that you actually need to move to a GPU class higher. So you'd be talking like 30, 60 Ti or uh, yeah. 2080 Ti, that yeah. sort of. Which is a bit know, awkward, super. but it's the way it is. I, I do love yeah. the idea, though, like. There's, there's always I always kind of think about it, but like, yeah, like with the PS4, it's interesting where GPU wise, I think the extra asynchronous compute there in the PS4 ended up being like the it's not a crutch, but it ended up being a real lifesaver for the system towards the latter half of it. Where if you read presentations from Naughty Dog or from anyone else, they would make certain aspects of the pipeline purposefully slow so that they could have more asynchronous compute time, which is just like, (laughs) you wouldn't ever want to do that on any other system because it was like, it's like this lopsided nature of the GPU, which is interesting. Um, Yeah. yeah, So I I guess that really helped them in the end uh, to make Mm -hmm. the most out of that system. Yeah, absolutely. Um, It's tricky because on the NVIDIA side, of course, the ray tracing performance of like, you know, 2070 Super, it's, you know, it's, it's yeah. going to be hard for PlayStation to gain ground on that, I I think. Uh, and of course, there's stuff like DLSS. You know, there's a the sort of different ecosystem there, different features, uh, different ways to accelerate performance. So it's, it is a tricky one. Uh, I don't know, Alex, you're still on 2070 Super, but I'm kind right. of thinking we should move you to 3060. I would love a 3060 just because it's, it's starting to get more representative 
a lot of people yeah, have a 3060. Yeah, something that I discovered. I mean, yeah. you know, going back in the day, the 3060 was basically a 2070 with more RAM. But um, you remember when the 40 series launched, there were revised drivers right. uh, for Ampere. I mean, I'm seeing some benchmarks now where 3060 is beating 2080. So wow. yeah. yeah, I think there's. I think we should upgrade you to 3060 because of just so many of them out there. Yeah, and it's a really cheap card you can buy now, and it's got 12 gigs of frame buffer memory. But that does mean we still need some sort of testing solution for eight gig. Yeah, I mean that. That's the. It could. It could end up being the the smaller, maybe 4060. I don't know. It could be some card. It could also be a Radeon yeah. card that's eight gigs. You know. 